it today uh, because o <coughs> OBS has had a big update, and uh, I don't know That's if anything will. Story. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, I'm ready to start um, the recording. Um, do you want to talk about anything else before we start? No, no, no. Yeah. it's fine. All right, let's start in uh, three, two, one. Let's go. So the Nosenki memoirs are b basically, um, yeah, memoirs by uh, one of the founders, and then I think he used to be the president of Gynet um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, and if you don't know what Gynet is, basically Gynet is the studio which made uh, Evangelion. That's what. <laughs> and if you don't know what, yeah. yes. Uh, but um, so the the version which uh, we read um, was an annotated uh, version made by a fan um, online, and in in, in, the, in the introduction, um, he says that uh, this book this uh, is not really it's not really that much uh, about Eva um, at all, um, and. That's certainly true. It's um, I, I I kind of felt like um, it was more about um, how how Gynets got started. Um, yes. and, yeah. yeah. I mean, when it, this when um, Takeda, I think that's his name, uh, starts talking about um, how how they worked on different shows and, and uh, what else, um, it's it's in a lot it's in a lot less detail than. Um, when he was talking about his his experience uh, with conventions um, and whatnot, um, which yeah, like uh, I looked on YouTube and um, there isn't a single video about uh, Nosenki memoirs. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I probably <clears throat> a lot of the information, at, at least the, the information related to Eva. Uh, in there um, has gotten dispersed, uh, and uh, 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 yeah, basically you should. But, but basically, you should only read this if you are into. Um, I don't know if you want to know uh, because I, I used to be like that too. Like I, I used to only care about. Uh, I when I first found out about this book, I like I was kind of uninterested because it says uh, people said that like. Um, it's not really about Eva and all that. Um, yeah, so so it's basically for Gynet's fans, essentially. Um, <laughs> yeah. For, for, for example, um, th there's little details ab about, like, uh, wh who is this character in this anime based on, um, f for example, uh, the, the love interest in <laughs> Gunbuster, uh, the, the Canadian or whatever, the, the white guy... Um, who dies um, after befriending an Noriko, um, the protagonist? Um, it is based. Yeah, <laughs> do you want to say it, Fahrenheit? If you remember. Uh, um, no, no, it's fine. I just remember the guy's name. Uh, Spiffu. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, so it's based on so, uh, some some uh, Canadian guy uh, um, who, who, who was. Into, into uh, J Japanese stuff and mm. anime uh, early on, and um, somehow or other um, ended up um, staying um, at uh, a place which they, which in the book is called Gainet's house or whatever, but, but basically an apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> a, a dirty, dirty apartment. And yeah, um, that's, s s somehow got a Japanese girlfriend as well. Um, E even though in the anime he, he ends up dead, I don't know what what, uh, what they meant by that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to ask. I know. I mean, so um, so the book starts um, in the um, early seventies. So um, yeah, I think around around the um, early seventies and. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, and the author talks, um, it's a memoir, so it's obviously about himself. He talks a little bit about how he got into sci-fi 
um, and conventions. And, and that's another thing to keep in mind that um, I don't think that uh, he was into anime and uh, like some of the people who went to, I mean, of the people who went to make uh, Gainats and all that, they, they were not necessarily into anime, but more into sci-fi. But it, yeah, yeah, it, it just it used to be um, the same uh, same thing basically um, in Japan. Uh, and like w- w- one of the uh, arguments which keeps on coming on um, between his generation, um, his people, and <clears throat> the older uh, sci-fi fans is whether um, anime um, and uh, other stuff like that, m- more like hearted stuff, is actual um, actual sci-fi <laughs> or not. And um, I, like I remember. P- uh, I've also heard that people used to argue whether sci-fi should be called SF or just sci-fi or science fiction. And n- now, I mean, looking back at all that, like, I don't really, I don't think most people care about um, sci-fi or, or this, uh, like, care enough about sci-fi enough to get into arguments that much about whether some, something is sci-fi or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, well, uh, allegedly, Takeda claims that um, he had a normal ch- childhood or whatever. He uh, used to do uh, skiing and uh, uh, had other, other um, hobbies. Um, but then uh, he started uh, reading novels. Mm-hmm. And he got really involved with, like he's saying, pretty much, well, they forced us to read in school, but. What really caught my eyes were uh, sci-fi novels. Yes. Um, another thing which he mentions uh, um, related to, to his uh, ch- um, childhood is the... Um, I think it's, it was the 1970... Uh, or rather, oh, not 1960, sorry, the 1960 uh, Expo. Um, yes, he went to the... Um, Hmm, what, what, where was it? Yeah, there was an expo about the city of the future, pretty much. Um, so, um, it was related to the moon landing and the future of um, space. So you can imagine it was probably also some kind of idea <laughs> uh, how in the future we'll be living on, on the moon and Mars, these kind of things. And uh, right, and, yeah. we all know all that ended up. <laughs> yeah, we are not um, living you know, on the moon. We haven't explored <laughs> Mars. Yet. Yes, yes, and um, Elon Musk is trying to. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, which is pro- probably why. Um, uh, but but uh, also there is another reason why it was a big deal was it, it was because it was uh, Japan's. Uh, Chance to show of um, its economic development since the uh, mm. since the end of the, of the war, like the fact that the nation um, had rebounded. I think I think uh, that they, 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 uh, so. So in the book, for example, they mentioned that the attendance to the expo was like half the population of Japan. But 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 but, uh, but I mean uh, the numbers. But it was also because like people used to go. Um, go there um, over and over again, and if if you read um, 20th Century Boys, uh, uh, the manga by the same guy who who made the the monster uh, manga uh, an uh, an anime, you know, uh, mm-hmm. um, it, uh, it's also set ar- around that era, and like um, you kind of you you, you get the. Uh, you get that feeling. Um, I, I, I'll tell you that. So it was the the Expo 1970 Osaka. I I, I remember. I vaguely remember that um, around 2010 or so, when um, the Chinese economy became larger than the Japanese economy, um, they they also had um, uh, had an Expo. Um, uh, 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 I think um, each year uh, they choose a different country. Yeah, probably yeah, they yeah, try to appeal yeah. to the, uh, the the country that can uh, shill out the most money to make it look the best. Yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, and uh, I, I guess uh, j just like the Japanese, maybe they celebrated a bit too a bit too soon. Uh, um, still, yeah. Japan, even even today, Japan still holds that that position of uh, position of honor in a sense because they so, never so, lacked in that regard. Yeah. So one of the things which was there at the expo were um, um, the stones from the, from yep. uh, from the moon. The, the Americans, th that's what they yeah, had. Yeah, the return of the um, it was like the Apollo Eleven landed on the moon, and they collected a few rocks, and everyone was lining up to see a bunch of rocks. But yeah, but they are they are moon rocks. So of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what Takeda says. That he uh, stayed in line for hours for, to see just a bunch of rocks, but it's it's not any um, yes. any kind of rock. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If I he guess... discovered that the moon landing was fake, he would be so disappointed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, at at some point, he he does say that like uh, he he thought that like. Uh, um, the future is. Uh, he thinks that uh, uh, sci-fi is the future, and and the future is sci-fi, or so something like that. He does mm -hmm. say something. Yes, like that. yes. Um. So, be, so because of his interest in sci-fi, um, um. Yeah, he gets into reading um uh, sci-fi novels, but uh, he gives up on on trying to read one of the Lensman uh, novels, which I haven't read either because I, I don't care. Then about sci -fi. He later on discover well. Of course, I gave up and I couldn't make sense of it. It's like <laughs> I'm I'm in the middle. I'm reading a book that's in the middle of a six book series. Of course, I cannot understand a single. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, and also he's, he he's, he was in sixth grade or something. Um, yes. And but because of his of his interest, he um, goes to I believe a university. Yes, um, kinky, um, kinky, but it's not spelled. <laughs> it, <laughs> Yes, it's with. <laughs> it's with an I mean, I it, at the end. It's not with a Y. It, it, it might as it might as well be spelled. Uh, you know, given that you're talking about Gainet, but. Uh, well, if you, uh, we have a title for uh, <laughs> for a future story. If we want to explore that. King, King <laughs> University. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all jokes aside, he gets into King University where he hopes to become a nuclear engineer because it was like electricity is the future and since sci-fi is the future electricity and the best way to produce it is going to be nuclear energy therefore that's going to be my future and then he realizes how powerful the atom is and he's like whoa <laughs> maybe it's not the best thing which is kind of interesting because the debate on, on nuclear power lately um, shifted again. I remember in the past, especially after well, after World War II, I can understand why, why someone from Japan may be a little bit um, worried about it. And then after the Chernobyl accident, again, there was a lot of doubt about this new source of energy. But right now, I think. Again, it's something that is coming into prominence because we were um, now the new nuclear power plants are way more safer. And even on um, when it comes to the damage that uh, but Fukushima uh, happened, uh, and yeah, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things again. Now there are, there are a lot of people doubting nuclear energy, but at the same time, Fukushima yeah. was such. I think it was an exception. It was well, yeah. Uh, I I could talk about um, what happened with with Fukushima. I think it was in twenty eleven. Yeah, wasn't it? Um, Something like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, basically, there was um, an earthquake. I think it was like nine point one or something. Mm -hmm. um, and like six people, I like six people died um, because because they were so well so well well, well prepared. Um, but what they didn't really um, account for was the um, tsunami um, afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Um, the um, tsunami damage, like, did most of the damage, the um, vast majority. Um, and But uh, what, what happened um, specifically with the nuclear plant is um, a, a process called a funneling happens. 
um, which caused um, the um, tsunami to raise um, higher than was um, projected. Mm -hmm. And so it it actually broke over the um, protective barriers around Fukushima, and and that's what caused the meltdown. Um, Yeah, you know, when Fukushima is obviously um, a um, edge case, you know, it's um, it's, this this is not going to happen to basically any other nuclear plant um, unless it's you know in like a earthquake zone with like the um, shape of of the mm-hmm. lands that can that can allow for, for funneling. So um, is that it was so recent, you know. Um, it was so recent, and also I think um, symbolically, um, it was quite too impactful for for um, Japan, right? Because mm-hmm. it was it wasn't like a neglect or something. I mean, everything kind of worked. Fine yes, um, sort of on the like, human ends, but it was it was it was like nature, you know, sort of. Um, we couldn't account for that, you know. And 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 sort of afterwards, um, the the government didn't really handle it properly either, and that and that's also what caused um, a lot of trouble as well afterwards. Um, yeah, I mean, it was um, it was pretty bad. Um, not to, not not to mention um, the um, tsunami, which which. I mean, the um, tsunami caused way more death and way more problems mm-hmm. um, after it like washed through cities and things. But um, the um, the nuclear plant was more of this like um, symbolic, um, you know, a defeat. You know, um, but yeah, I think. In, um, in, in any case, uh, Takeda yeah, didn't didn't really <laughs> didn't really spend that that much. T- that might have been his, his motivation, but. He didn't really spend that much time going to classes, so he spent yeah. um, six years at the university. <laughs> Pretty and, much uh, stuck in, in the yeah. first year. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. he, he was, was able to move to the second year after, yeah. after uh, that. years, and then that's when he stopped. Yeah. Actually, um, this, this, this isn't technically Gainax related, but um, Shin um, Godzilla was pretty much based off of that to 2011 um, Earthquake and um, tsunami. Oh. Um, um, yeah, we which is obviously Godzilla because it was again the fear of the yeah, you know, when so. yeah, um, you know, when God, um, Godzilla wasn't like it wasn't the strictly the um, atomic bomb in a Shin um, Godzilla. It was um, it was more like of like a placeholder for like nuclear power in um, in general. In general, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, speaking of uh, Shin Godzilla, I mean, I, I guess mm-hmm. another reason why why we 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 don't hear, we like I hadn't heard about uh, Takeda or uh, whatever his name. Um. I, I had <laughs> heard of, um, the name of the guy. Yes. Yes. Um. I hadn't heard of him, and the reason for that is because he's not a creator. Um. Like, I. I it's just a, ma- a manager, I guess. Yes, um, it's more uh, you can get the feeling throughout the, the book that it's more the guy, he's not an idea guy, he's not the creative leader or anything, he's more the person who, who connects all the dots, in a sense. And that's what also they talk about towards the end. You know, he's the one who's able to uh, rally the people around an idea that someone else has, and is able to bring the right people for the right job. So one person, sort of person. Yeah, yeah. I, he he does seem to be um, a, a, from his writing here. Anyway, he feels like he's more enjoying himself when he's organizing a convention of uh, like yeah. being on a movie set rather than. Um, he's a ball man. He's a ball manager in the real sense of in the real sense of the word manager. He, has to, he really likes to manage things and people, and is able to make them work. Um, so um, another person who, who unlike Takeda, was able to use um, his involvement with Gainets to to be to become pop, more popular, I guess, and make a career, career out of it would be Toshio Okada or. Mm. The self-proclaimed Osha King. Um, <laughs> I think I think he worked on um, he worked on um, Osaku no video and maybe as the director for that, but he didn't really direct anything else or uh, do any, anything else much. Um, but so, so 
Um, I mean, to a certain extent, I don't know if it's fair to say it. like uh, an idea guy. The guy who throws yeah. um, yeah. stuff on the wall until something sticks <laughs> to a degree. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 so basically, the, the feeling that I got here is that Tajeda is more persistent, uh, whereas Okada is more like, uh, let's do something big just because, uh, but then mm. he doesn't do anything. Uh, Somebody yeah. else has to do that. Again, he's, he's more uh, of the idea guy. The one who, who, who comes up with the concept, but then is not able yeah. to, because, <laughs> to really uh, pull uh, it through. <laughs> because after, after leaving Gainet, basically, um, yeah, Toshio had a, uh, he, he ended up like, uh, well, at, at some point he renounced being an Osaku, but now he's back to making YouTube videos, uh, anime analysis <laughs> videos on YouTube. <laughs> Um, but, but also for a time I believe that he was hired as a university professor to teach about anime, so like the, the theory. Yes, he, yes. He, wrote a, he wrote quite a few books on it. Um, so, so he's more of a theory guy than a practice. Uh, yeah. as, yes. um, His creativity is more in finding new ideas rather than being the one who uh, redevelops them. Uh, he he's, he's more about about uh, like the meta about anime. Like if you if you have seen Otaku no video, then it's, no, I uh, haven't, but I can imagine know. what you mean. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> obviously it's about um, well, we have done a stream about Otaku no video, and maybe we will talk about it later in the stream <laughs> as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, so yes, Takeda. Then um, after, uh, I think, yeah, in the second year, he finds out uh, about the sci sci-fi club uh, mm -hmm. at the university. Uh, 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 oh, and by uh, yeah, and then afterwards, he basically spends all his time at the club. And apparently, it's not even an official club, so they don't have a yes, they have in the university. A venue compared to other. Um, clubs in the university they are, they are not like it's interesting to see how the university approves or um, <laughs> sort of gives a, an aura of authority that say yes this club does exist, no this club does not exist it's, it's something that yeah. from my perspective it's kind of kind of strange. Not in even a, a mean way. It's more like it's something I never experienced. Therefore, it comes out uh, so alien to me, and it's fascinating. Yeah, ba basically, the, the bureaucracy, maybe the, probably the student union of your university will decide whether mm -hmm. you can have um, a quote unquote club, which basically means yes, that uh, you can have a room. Say this, like, it's up to the university committees and everything to decide if your if your club is approved or if it's more of a like you just meet together with other people and that's it. Yes, and because of um, because of the club, um, this, because he finds out, and and the reason that he wasn't able to find the sci-fi club um, during the first year apparently was because it. Like it's not it's even not an, 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 <laughs> yeah, and it's not an official club either. So, so there's I can that. imagine um, like um, it would be something that would appear on a, on billboards throughout the school if there were any clubs because they would have meetings and other things. Therefore, they would post them somewhere. But this group not being officially recognized, they um, one they couldn't endorse themselves, and second they could not officially. Uh, call the members to meet at one point in that classroom or that other place because they were not yeah. recognized. Yeah, they, they basically met uh, at uh, some kind of cafe, which apparently mm -hmm. they still do, do yeah. the club at least. Um, at and least uh, they, say, they say in the notes that this place in the same notes. Yeah, the, who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, I hope. And, and honestly, I do hope because they seem like a, a nice group of dedicated people. So I wish for yeah. them to be able to go on. I, I mean, I, I did go to 
my university is an anime club and it was totally <laughs> pathetic. Um, <laughs> like, nobody would talk to each other. They would just put on uh, an anime on um, on a TV mm. show. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. on a, like on a screen. Uh, and they would watch some seasonal shit and then everyone uh, would go mm. home. Not um, even the days after the, after the screening. Because e- I think e- it's fine to yeah. go, and then you, it's like you watch a movie all together, and then you, you have an, like, an open debate what you like, what you didn't like, etc. At least yeah. that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, well, the- I, think, I think the problem was is that like, the uh, club was like formally recognized. I'm really, really. Um, like um, anime, like um, anime fans, like need to be persecuted. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's how you get guy nets, uh, uh, right? Um, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> they stood up yeah. for the little guys, in a sense. I mean, uh, Tahira himself says that, like, um, he was kind of pushed um, by basically, like, because. Um, it's not something that he he can talk with um, normal people, so that's why he was pushed into the club and um, to do stuff for it. Um, whereas now um, I, I've I mean, I've seen uh, uh, Okada make some points like that as well. Um, it's I like he said, say, he said, as a furry, <laughs> well, as, as someone who still likes the furry fandom. I get that feeling like there is something that if you were to talk about publicly, you'll get either people frowning at you or making snarky remarks behind your back, like, oh, that guy is it. He's probably <laughs> thinking weird stuff right now or things like this. Yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, for example, I've seen Okada, not just Okada, I've seen other older anime fans as well both in mostly in the west but i don't really know what japanese fa- all the japanese fans think but th- that um, basically uh the fandom used to be better better because it was harder to um to get stuff or to find people to talk about uh, about it i heard the uh, same like, argument uh, from people who liked um certain tabletop games like oh it was better when we were just a niche Therefore, people had to look for us. Therefore, less uh, mainstream ideas came into our fandom. Which, which, to a degree, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. I mean, um, I, I just like just to um, sort of give like a weird example. Um, have any of you like heard of like Breakcore? <laughs> just, just as an example. I mean, um, sorry. Like um, the musical genre um, break call. Anyway, no, it, 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 does, it doesn't really matter if, if you've listened to it or not. I mean, I'm not like <laughs> a big fan of of break call, but um, what you sort of hear all um all the time um these days, um from like the um, OGs is like um it's sort of how the how the genre has has been watered down. How like anything mm. you know like any like trap beats can just be called oh, break call okay. these days, and it doesn't okay, really mean okay. anything. No, no, I'm guessing what you. Okay. Yeah, like um, I, I think what happens with um, I, I think this this is just like a natural part of of the life cycle of like you know metalhead. I can these see like that. hobbies or like these the same thing that happened when uh, like alternative metal came into the scene and it was like a mixture of metal and rap, and people were like, "What the heck is this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. In my scene. Yeah, so you know, like to begin, um, these like things have like their own very like distinct identity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sort of outside of other things, and, um, and that's I'd why say. a lot of people were not keen on even trying to uh, bring the anime world into the sci-fi world. Where I know these are two distinct things; they should be kept away. From yeah, the world. I mean. You know, they're um they they usually start off like quite particular, you know, and quite quite separate. But then they and sort of then they like pick up popularity, and then they yeah, sort of yeah, sort of get yeah. dragged into like the um broader, you know, um mm-hmm. sort of um the horizon you know, expands, and they start to get more and more elements from other subcultures, 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and yeah, sort of, sort of at that point, we could say, you know, some of the properties that that are around discovered in these smaller groups, maybe mm-hmm. sort of rub off onto like the broader culture, but what it means is like that subgroup mm-hmm. sort of erodes away, and it ultimately just becomes watered down, and then sort of, yeah. kind of just like dissipates, right? I think, but yes, you know, I think this is they, like they, a, they try to they try to grow in number by associating with other groups. But it, it waters down their identity. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I, I think you know um, that could be seen with anime. Um, to, yeah, you know, where today yeah, yeah. it's sort of, you know, it's not it's not this like niche thing anymore. You know, where anyone can kind of make anime. Like <laughs> um, you know, um, we, you know, we can, you know, like people sense, have made videos yeah. asking you know, when, what what even is anime. You know, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, and um, because of this, uh, I believe certain stereotypes are pushed more than others. And they ruin the reputation of what the media could be. I mean, honestly, I kind of, I kind of see the opposite uh, complaint no, no, as well. Uh, that uh, that, um, that anime in the past uh, used to look more outwards to to other genres, whereas now it's it has become too inward. At the same time, it became yeah. It's uh, that's not another thing I was about to say. It's like, and at the same time, because they try to broaden more and more. Um, the same, um, what we now call tropes, come come up over and over again, and then they become a stereotype. I remember there was like uh, a fortune green test saying, "How comes that uh, uh, anime got so bad? Think about the '80s. It's like all these manly, muscular things like Berserk and." <laughs> He was making like, for example, uh, Okuto no Ken, etc. And now it's like, uh, and the average. Okay, bye, hey, and now it's like the average anime is like. Uh, <laughs> uh, I cannot believe I'm dating my uh, my half sister who's also a slime. <laughs> it was like it's kind of funny because it's true. A lot of of the titles that sell the most right now are this kind of, uh, I would say, post Moe stuff, because Moe was in the two thousands. Yeah, Moe is kind of dead. Yeah. But then it became it's the same thing as irony and post irony. Now it's sort of post Moe. It's a sort of post ironic take on Moe. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's. It's kind of interesting because if you think about the anime of like the eighties, I mean, were they like necessarily selling to a international market? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think like in general they were trying to sell. They, they worked to, better to the Japanese, for like you know, when yeah. primarily right. But I, it, but like something like something weird is like is happening where you know like the the content is more. Looking in on itself, right? Yeah, but it's at the same time, there, yeah. it's it's sort of being <laughs> sold more and more internationally. So I mean, like you know, and it's the same thing that, in a sense, know. you see throughout the memoir, how sci-fi became intermingled with anime, and then anime, in a sense, started to uh, cater towards the same sensibility of sci-fi because certain <laughs> certain team. And certain imagery um, became more and more popular. Yeah, uh, how art influenced itself to a point where it becomes like sort of a spiraling circle, and when it reaches critical mass, it explodes, and then it starts over again in this circle of owning onto something and then exploding back for uh, back. It's, uh, it's or, the yeah, and it's the um, anime demiurge or something. <laughs> it's more like you know the um, there is the idea of the multiple of the multiple big bangs. They say yes, there was a big bang, but before this big bang, there was another big bang, and so on. Like the universe expands, then starts to contract, and then expands again, something like that. And I think sci-fi was one of those um, catalysts. For this expansion and then implosion. 
basically a sci-fi died but anime lived um yes and yeah. truth and through anime sci-fi keeps keeps on living in to a degree yeah um, sci-fi was... from the 80s doesn't exist anymore um cyberpunk from the 80s doesn't exist anymore and so, yet some yeah. remnants some remnants of, of it lingers on in other media like i know that some yeah. people i mean about, um um uh, what's the name cyberpunk 2077 edge runner lately yes yeah and i think it's again this <laughs> to quote george lucas is like it rhymes <laughs> like this yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not watching that show out out of principle <laughs> but it's a regurgitation of the same things over and over again in a sense you can still feel the same desire for that outlandish um outlandish on look on sci-fi in in it even if it's completely different there is the same desire like a little bit like in ghost in the shell but again informed <laughs> that informed um um cyberpunk as a genre in the first place so it's so, kind of can, cannibalistic to a degree. Sorry for this tangent on and just no, kind of no, no. think about it. Yeah, like a, we're, 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 we're talking about the um, sci-fi club. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. When he went to university, After he gave yeah. up on nuclear energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How he like retook like the year like a bunch of times and stuff. <laughs> it was yeah. It was there for like six years. Uh, that's mm-hmm. pretty, that's pretty. <laughs> Yeah, um, and uh, Toshio Okada, by the way, according to, to the footnotes, um, he he basically uh, went to university only three days, found the sci, uh, found out where the sci-fi club was, uh, joined the sci-fi club, and then just stopped Sci-fi going to university. <laughs> <laughs> um, he put all his, his dedication into the sci-fi club, rather than. <laughs> Yeah, um, and by the way, uh, Okada at this point uh, he was going to another, another, another university in another sci-fi club. Um, <laughs> so the the, uh, the people who formed Gainas hadn't um, already met at this point. Um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It's it's like some sort of like film, you know. They like slowly uh, come together over like multiple events. Yeah, it's really interesting <laughs> how you see this like um, network of connections forming throughout the years and through different events and me and like almost like by fate these people were able to meet um so i, I believe that wh- one of the things which happened while while he was in the sci-fi club was that um um uh, uh, some someone else uh, suggested uh, somebody called uh, uh, goto uh, who was an, uh, a year older than him, um, like uh, who was more serious be- than um, I, I, I was almost going to say the, the protagonist, as, <laughs> as if this is a story. Um, he is the protagonist because he's telling yes. his own story. Yeah. So, makes sense. yeah. So so, uh, so this Goto guy, like he he was more serious. He had written novels and was part of. Uh, Creative uh, group uh, based in um, based in Kyoto, mm-hmm. um, and um, he talked with uh, he, he even had connections uh, with the with the so called big name uh, big name fans who who were apparently like yeah we were already it, the people who had um, published or were known in the literary circles beyond it, 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 the clubs yeah. Yeah, so so they were still fans, but uh, they had they had more influence on on the fans. Um, Let's say they were active fans rather than just yes, yeah. ones. And um, on a, because of suggestion by this guy called Goso uh, Takeda, um, and because obviously Takeda wasn't doing anything other than <laughs> uh, because apparently the, the the activities of of this club, um, at least at the start, were just like. To just talk about sci-fi, uh, yeah, just talk, just talk, uh, and, and that's it. Just, just a talking shop. Um, 
So I, I'm, yeah, we're not really involved with the production of anything. Anything, yeah. And uh, d- due to a suggestion by Gotro, he he started to form uh, this thing called the Confederation of Kansai mm-hmm. Student Sci-Fi Club. Uh, so Kansai is the region um, which includes the city of Osaka. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, 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 by the way, um, the Kansai dialect uh, is kind of um, uh, important. Yes. Uh, no, uh, I mean it, it's more of a, a working class kind of um, um, a kind of dialect. So, so people from Tokyo, like in some anime, um, at least in De- Detective Conan, for example, um, like there's characters from Kansai, and they will make the point that oh, they have a Kansai dialect and, and all mm-hmm. that. Uh, it's so, also but, 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 something that later on they will adopt as a. Um, as a sort of name for themselves, so it's important also to the to the story of the yeah. of the studio itself, which I find kind of interesting. They yeah, it, it's all the stuff that yeah. can be used as a as a new sort of. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's sort of like um, I, I guess it's diff- it basically if Hideakiano was <laughs> was British, he would he would have a. An, an, another uh, accent, <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> um, and, and the same as as all these guys who, who are from that yeah. region and from and, any and, country. And, honestly, I think is the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and and that's why, um, like he talks about how there's some antipathy between the Tokyo fans, the ones <laughs> in the Tokyo region, yes, and the ones in the. Osaka. They, they sort of um, look down to them like, yeah, you're sort of like from this other region, therefore we can <laughs> take your heart. So basically, <laughs> right, um, um, yeah. opinions, you know, o- o- Osaka is like the second largest um, uh, metropolitan area after Tokyo. But like, so, but um, basically the fans from Tokyo would, would look down um, Oh, oh, and would act like um, they know more about like yeah uh, I have the same like <laughs> because everything is based um, in Tokyo like all, all the that things rela- related to sci-fi anyway we are so, from the capital yeah. therefore we know better than you <laughs> um, almost so, so basically this uh, confederation of um, Kansai student sci-fi clubs is um, um N- nothing more than um, so he j- he just goes from Takeda just goes from um, university to university to different uh, to, to the clubs um, to the yeah, sci-fi clubs. You cannot get enough. But she like jumps <laughs> from one university to another just to talk with people. No, 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 I'm not. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, but but also because um, mm. the purpose of this club. Um, is supposedly to f- to create uh, interclub activities mm-hmm. um, to, to make all the different sci-fi uh, be- because sci-fi was popular, so every university apparently had a sci-fi club or something. And um, mm-hmm. and every, it, each university yeah. had its own club. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, I think uh, it said that at, at its height, this confederation. Had uh, n- nine different universities, uh, or rather, nine mm-hmm. different clubs from um, mm-hmm. nine universities. Um, and at yeah. first, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like just, just thinking about it. I mean, um, attack. Like, um, you see, like so much of this in um, attack on a video, right? Where, like, the club is not in university; it's in, like someone's house, you know, when like they're in like a basement somewhere, <laughs> uh, and, and like people are like sleeping. Um, in like in like in like the club room, and then there's like a big emphasis on like the um, festivals and stuff. Um, yeah, it, it 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 yeah, it just sort of came to me now. Um, yeah, the, I was was he like involved um, at at all with the um, making of um, Attack on the Video? I mean, he must he must have been right to to some degree. Yeah. But I mean, oh. yeah, I, I guess that was just like the, that was just yeah. the culture they were in, you know. Yeah, oh, 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 me, uh, Okada certainly was involved. I think he was a director and writer or something. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, you know, um, Otaki. Yes. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Um, so, uh, so at first it it was just uh, basically the clubs would get together and make a monthly um, newsletter about the happenings um, of uh, sci-fi in, in Japan um, and whatnot. Um, so ar- around this time, um, Takeda um, he, he starts like uh, he starts he he goes to a local convention. Um, and there's a bit, um, yeah, so he, so he explains what the conventions are. Um, so, I mean, um, so, so if, if, if he talks about how, how there, there were two different kinds of conventions. So, yeah, there is the general one and the local one. So yeah. Like centralized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, but, but also. Also, he talks about how, how, like, there were those in metropolitan um, mm-hmm. areas. The more rural, rural areas and more relaxed affair compared to the... Yeah, and, and, and how, um, basically, if you, if you did one in, in the rural areas, like, I don't know, you book a whole hotel or something, uh, then uh, the people who come would also... You would also have to give them lodgings. Um... And they would be, obviously they would, they would be smaller uh, gatherings, and um, there would be basically drinking into the night, talking about sci-fi. Or, or yeah, more whatever. like a, a small, smaller scale, therefore a bit more intimate compared to larger scale ones that, of course, were better organized and but felt a bit more like distant. Yeah, B- because I don't know. Um, I went to. The, the only convention which I've gone to a couple of mm-hmm. times, and I mean, I say gone to, but it's just because that's where I lived, um, is the the Luca Comics um, in Italy. Mm-hmm. I've been um, there once. I've been to Luca yeah. Comics once in 2000. Oh my. How long ago was it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so young. Is it 2004 or 2000? Like fourteen or four or fifteen, <laughs> it's just so weird to think. Yeah. Um. So so anyway, he went to this um lo- um this local convention and he had ha- and he had a lot of fun. Um. And then uh, next he went to a larger convention. I can't remember exactly the right name. Um. um Aomi, Oshino, yeah. Oshino, Oshino Kon or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A, a three day uh, event. Uh, unlike local cons, it was uh, attended by a large number of professional writers and editors. He first went uh, to the. Um, he first went to another like convention, and and it was like it was more like a regular science convention, the Tokyo Exposition. And after yeah. that, he went to Lake Oshino, where this. Um, Oshinokon was supposed to take place, and well, <laughs> yeah. it felt like it didn't did not live up to the hype. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. First, he went to like a, like a, like a, a real science yeah. <laughs> convention, yeah. I guess you, you could say, uh, basically an exhibition uh, with some uh, space uh, related stuff. Or something, mm-hmm. um, and then he went to the sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, and then he went to the sci-fi convention. Um, and yeah, uh, b- b- uh, and basically his experience was that like the only good times which he had were were with his friends. That there wasn't really anything, um, a- 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 like that. Uh, like um, they they were not really part- participating. Maybe um, I guess they were may- maybe just watching mm-hmm. uh, what, what what was going on. They were just um, an audience. I can imagine modern. for sure. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest problem. What well, that was the biggest problem for him. The bigger a convention usually, especially when there are a lot of panels and stuff like this going on, you sort of lose. <laughs> A little bit of the um, human contact with everyone else around you. I, I think this, this is also this might be also where I'm not sure, but but he's, he's um, 
he's also introduced to um, Okada, Toshi Okada, and mm. um, so uh, he's told that by another friend of his that uh, oh, there's this guy who, who's just like you, uh, and. Um, B- yeah, basically. this guy is absolutely not like me, but then they realize why, why uh, they they are the same in a sense. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, basically, like he's your st- stereotypical uh, geek or whatever. Yes, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's yeah. So so the uh, so he goes to this. Con- I think o- Okada is there at, uh, at this convention at, at this. Um, what was it called again? Ashinoko mm-hmm. or something. Ashinokon. Um And um, uh, he's there with, uh, with Okada as well. And apparently, it, it's so boring that um, <laughs> he 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 and Okada start uh, talking about uh, yes. Godzilla and uh, what if the. Uh, 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 the battleship in, sp- uh, in space battleship Yamato um, was a Chinese uh, <laughs> was, uh, was Chinese themed or cowboy themed um, and, and what not um, and, and apparently um, a, a little crowd uh, starts exactly. to gather, gather, gather around them they are sort and, of like in front of vending machines just chatting among themselves and more and more people start to gather around, around them with them banter and joke about, about these various scenarios. Yeah, and and then they spend, uh, they start, uh, they, uh, they gather an audience and it, and, and it lasts from 10, 10 o'clock in, at night to um, 8 a.m. Yes. Or, or something. Um, something. Um, I think he said around 8 hours, so maybe le- less than that, um, around 8 hours. And then... Um, the people who who run the con, um, they get in touch with them and they're like, "You guys uh, are kind of fun, you know how to entertain people. Why don't you show up at the closing ceremonies?" And, and Takeda seems a little bit more skeptical compared to the others. Yeah, but but, but um, Takeda is like, how, "How can you say that? We we, we have come so far." <laughs> um, and, we we uh, rehearsing for like eight hours, not even knowing. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I, if I recall, basically this is this is when, um, and I think basically while talk, coming back from the convention, they start to think about like, oh, we we, we could also conventions are great. Yes, they? We, yes. we, we could make a, much they they get called the Gaina group, uh, the Gaina entertainers, because Gaina is one of the worlds from the Osaka region, and they start to debate among themselves, should we maybe next time be the ones hosting uh, the sci-fi convention, and more or less, <laughs> you can imagine, like, they, they had very little sleep, they were still... Um, coming to gripe with all these emotions welling up in them and they are like well we could try and do this so it's kind of like they are in a dazed state of mind but at the same time they want to give this a shot yeah I think one of the things which kind of bugged me is that like um, where the hell did, 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 these, did these people find? Because like they talk, they also talk about like uh, going uh, going to the uh, USA to see um, WorldCon, which I've never heard of, but apparently it's the yeah, original. Yeah, yeah. It, it's apparently surprised. the original. Also, Disneyland. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 so what? What I was one of the things which I was wondering about is. Where did, where did, 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 did these people get the money as to them? Probably, um, probably they asked their family. Yeah. <laughs> I can I mean, imagine it, 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 the, 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 the kind of excuses like that they try to put. I, okay, it's sort of like, uh, it's related to university. I need to go there but, to speak. But meanwhile, they're not going to classes. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, like, none of them are going to classes. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, so they also go to, to, to the USA um, and basically get, get an idea about what convention yeah. um, should, should be like. like. Exactly, how they should um, be handled, etc. Yeah, and, and, and they mentioned that this was uh, before Tokyo Disneyland was um, was built, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Um, so, uh, so after they, they come back, um, they, they try to set up, um, like, the bigger, uh, um, there's some bu- bureaucratic nonsense going on. Yeah, they, they, try try to, they, they pretty much try to propose this idea to the, uh, uh, to the guests. I, to the second I, uh, group and they're like no you, you're you're a bunch of green horns you cannot do this kind of thing yeah. and then at the same time they're able to convince enough um, let's say uh, people from the lower strata of the sci-fi groups to convince the upper class men to let them at least try to create this convention. Yeah, basically, basically what, what happened was that the, the, the date for the convention, which they like the, the name of the convention and the convention which they wanted to do, um, somebody else, it was up to a, like a, a committee to decide uh, what it was going to be and where, where it was going to go. But without asking them, uh, like they they just started organizing, gathering people, um, and all that. Uh, um, they sort and, of brute forced it. They were like, "We already put the gears are already in motion. Please let us do it." A lot of people are doing it already. Yeah, I mean, basically, by the point that they found out that they couldn't have, um, they couldn't do the convention that they wanted to do. They they had already. Mm-hmm. Um, gathered people a, a location I think was also booked um, and all that and then to save them I think uh, comes the the Space Force Club uh, I think I think it was called um, um, uh, so apparently there's, there's yeah um, something there's something called the Space Force Club and like the, peop- the people in it uh, uh, apparently refer to each other a bit Mil- military rankings, um, <laughs> like uh, yeah, the, the guy in charge of it uh, apparently is called the commanding chief or something. Um, and um, uh, through them, they are able to do another um, smaller convention, uh, just sort of to test the water and see yeah if they um, uh, if they are good enough. Um. And yeah, basically, like a lot of the book is um, spent describing describing um, um, what happened in, in the different conventions, how, how they got ready, and all that. And it's honestly, it's really interesting. You can see how this person, like um, the the author of the book, uh, this Takeda guy, this. This person is very dedicated to his craft, and his craft is pulling people together for any kind of project, be it a convention or a video game or or an anime. He really knows how to um, lead the way, in a sense. I wouldn't even say he's a manager. It's more like uh, a scout, someone that leads the way, it's like a pathfinder, is able to lead people towards some objective. I mean, uh, yeah, but, but then again, like there are several times where like uh, other people have have to like uh, drag him out of his uh, lethargy. And... Later on, yes, but you can still see that in a sense, is the one that keeps these groups um, together. Is that it's like the glue, the bonding element. 
the keep all the yeah yeah, yeah. The I mean I'll, I'll, I'll broadly agree with that right and you um definitely see that um later on when like they actually have a company um but yeah like um he does like he does go through like issues right um, do, like you know during his periods but I think I think like getting married like fixes that for him but, but that's yeah. like well that's, yes like, no. and that's a yes bit later no. oh yeah yeah speaks, um, um, speaking of oh, him yes. get, get, Getting yeah, married. Well, speaking, well, I mean, speaking of of his wife. Um, yes. <laughs> how, how he first met her. Um, <laughs> uh, it was it was actually at the convention, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, um, he says, you know, so we may as well believe him. You know, um, there was this fifteen-year-old girl. Fourteen, fourteen, yeah. not fifteen, fourteen. <laughs> yeah, he says um, he didn't. He didn't like make any moves at that point. So you know, um, he wait. He waited. You know. Four years or something. Um, I yeah, think it's, it's not a creeper compared to other people. <laughs> <laughs> Gave her the time to make her own, <laughs> make her own. Yeah, mind but, 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 yeah, but but the surprising thing um, to him at that point about her was because I think she was also involved in the preparations. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, and that how she was, she was a, and um, how she was. Yeah, she, yeah, she was um, a writer, and she was showing like people her work, wasn't she? Um, yeah. When you, and yeah. The, the the surprising thing for him is that like um, oh, oh they, they were already uh, in their twenties, so uh, I guess um, if maybe a little bit younger than that. Uh, and um, uh, but look, there were already younger people who were already into sci-fi and trying yeah. to like uh, d- do something. Um, who wanted to get yeah. involved? Yeah, who was quite who was quite involved in fan activities? Um, yeah. yeah, and hoping yeah. to be a professional. Um, yeah, I've, but, just, I've just noticed. Um, I've I've just noticed you like choosing from now. Um, I um, <laughs> I um, what is it? Um, I approve of the from now choice. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> it's from something which we'll talk about um, when we get to yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, the impression that I got, for, for example, uh, from him, I think he, he does uh, himself say it as well that, like, and um, the like, uh, when he talks about like uh, people like Arno um, and uh, a bunch of other people, um, another guy called Akai who managed mostly did the games uh, at uh, mm-hmm. Gainet and all, and also. Uh, Yama something who who directed a bunch of anime as well, but not very well in my opinion. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, anyway, he he says of those guys that like uh, oh they had talent, they they knew um, what they wanted to do, um, and they were going to show the world whatever whatever. Whereas when it came to him, um, it was more like uh, he had no plan or anything. Um, yeah, and that that, that becomes so, um, obvious um, as it as it goes on, as well um, that he had no plan for his life or whatever. Yes, he was he, going he with was, emotion, pretty much. Yes. Um, yeah. So you know, uh, compared to that, like uh, you you can see his wife is already serious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, though, though, she, though she's younger than him. Um, okay. So. Um, I can't remember that many details about uh, any other details other than the wife um, <laughs> from the first convention that they tried to set up. Um, is the second convention the, um, oh, look, let, give me a second I'll look at the um, yes, the <laughs> yes they, they named the convention they named the convention Daikon yeah, and that's and that's when they decide to make the opening animation, right? Um, yeah. Which would be Daikon Free. Oh yeah, and, and, and I guess the I, I first kanji in, in in Osaka can also be red dye. So they were like, yeah, let's call it instead yeah. of instead of Okon, let's call it yeah. Daikon. Also, also, I believe that uh, dye also means big, and also Daikon. Yes, uh, it, it is the kanji for big. Yeah. Well, I mean, you. You should know, right? I mean, it's it's kind of in like the server title. Um, 
<laughs> yes, um, th- 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 sometimes I forget. Um, uh, yeah, uh, also, like, it's, it's the, the vegetable, I guess. <laughs> which, which, which is why in the opening animation, the spaceship, um, that the little girl um, brings it, brings the glass of water to is, uh, is shaped like a, a, that vegetable. Anyway. Um, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I mean, just like just a side note about like I, th- I think this this is um, Hiragana, right? Or or a or a, Hir- or a Hiragana. Um, I was um, I spent like um, quite a while figuring out the second symbol, like after after um, SOS, and uh, apparently it, it it just means like organization, right? Um, that it's like second uh, Yeah, uh, it it's because yeah. the, the in. In our Hari Suzumiya, it's called um, SOS Dan, not SOS. It's tra- they tra- just uh, the translator translated translated as um, uh, SOS Brigade, but mm, it's totally Yeah, interesting. Well, uh, yeah, like that. I was then um, inspired later on um, to uh, append the uh, Black Lodge with <laughs> with some uh, with some hero color of my own, and that basically translates to like criminal. Organization. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny, um, but yeah, but like that that came from like me like, like trying to figure out like how on earth um, Hirakana works. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, when, when there is that 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 box that uh, around it, it is like something that confines, uh, like imagine a palisade around something. <laughs> Mm. Uh, so, well, uh, one thing which I do remember about about the, the small convention which they did earlier is that um, so uh, you remember like um, that he went to the science convention before going to the sci-fi convention, right? Yes. Um, and I think he was able to make some connections somehow there and get uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that that's what he's good at, I guess, uh, and uh, to get the footage uh, for. Yes, uh, the- for the next conversion, was able to get the fo- the footage of the moon landing. Yeah, and uh, that's all of his for- qualities. Like it's really good at making uh, meaningful connections with people around him. All right, uh, which is why, like, uh, I guess yeah, later but, on we'll talk about. It, um... Yeah, so was it was it like this point where they were like making the um Daikon free animation where like they made a sweatshop or did or did they make sweatshops both times? Well, uh, <laughs> I, I think remember. both times. Uh, both yeah. times yeah. it was yeah. the second time. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. they just increased the uh, uh yeah. <laughs> they just uh, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so so because they uh they had this intro uh, they bo- they borrowed this intro and um, parent um, people were surprised that they were able to get this footage for the small convention. Now that they they were working on Daikon 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 Three, um, I think it was called Daikon Three because it was the third convention in yeah. held in Osaka or something. Um, and um, um, but, but it's not like it's always held that that convention is always held in Osaka. I I believe. Um, Mm. Necessarily, um, so so this time um, because last time uh, the people cared about the the opening um, in the video that they showed. Um, uh, this time they decided that they had to make some they had to make something uh, themselves, yeah. and again th- th- through another of um, of. Um, his connections, um, he's able to meet uh, Hideaki Anno. Uh, so, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess at this point we could, all, we could also mention uh, the TV series um, 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 Aoi Hono or Blue Blazers or something. That's yes, yeah. Which uh, so so in the annotated uh, annotated version, um, which will probably come up if you search for it, as one of the first uh, results. Um, uh, they ask uh, clips. Um, they they take clips from the TV series because the TV series 
uh, is based on um, um, basically uh, yeah so stuff which happened um, not it's not it's about uh, it's not necessarily about guy but uh, um, well uh, yeah, but, but anyway they have they have um, so, uh, sort of reenacted things which happened um, at that time at that university mm-hmm. that TV series um, and anyway I, I know is able to impress um, Takeda because I, I think that, that he didn't even really want to like make an anim- anime as the opening for Daikon 3 necessarily but then yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a very good story of um, how um, Anna met with uh, with Atakada Wrights, where he um, shows him like um, his animation skills and um, yes, um, and the, yeah. And this is uh, and, and this is brought up again um, in the interview um, at, at the end of the book. But um, he like draws like a mech like running in place or something, and um, mm-hmm. you know where Takeda is very. Um, is it obviously like, like very impressed by this? Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which you know, which, which it isn't surprising. I mean, um, Anno is like famous um, for his like for his animation skills. Um, look, it, it's interesting in in the interview later. Um, Anno sort of plays it down and says, "Well, you know, it was only like three or four cells, and it wasn't yeah. and it wasn't that great, you know." <laughs> and yet, if it's blown out of proportion, like, it was something that revolutionized uh, Takeda's view on animation. Mm. We'll never know the truth. There are these two <laughs> opposite views of these events. On one side, Takeda's uh, recollection of it saying it was something that surprised him beyond belief. And on the other side, Anno's recollection is like, I just made a few few doodles. Yeah, a few but, uh, I, mean, I, I, I mean, Anno is not, from what I've seen anyway, he's not the sort of guy who um, doesn't necessarily come off as particularly mm-hmm. pr- prideful. Uh, let's he say. doesn't want to brag about it. No, him. no. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think like all the times like, I saw him talk, um, he's usually like quite a humble, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm trying to like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think back to like the uh, Kitty Hoodie documentary. <laughs> no, the um, the um, behind the scenes. I mean, you, you don't you don't really see him like talk directly. Um, I think, I think yeah, like you do s- hear him talk a few times um, in the behind the scenes. But yeah, like he doesn't like big himself up or anything. Um, mm-hmm. Oftentimes, like he's like instructing the. <laughs> Actress of like how to do the uh, hoodie flash thing properly. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I really like him. Um, yeah, like you um, said, he seems like a very humble person. Doesn't want to show off or say yes, I'm the greatest creative mind <laughs> in the room. Yeah, there's, there's this um, there's this very interesting clip. Um, I think there was like this like special like um, a lesson or like with. Um, it's like piano or something where like he goes to a school and he tells them about like animation and it, it just like turns into like this like very uh, depressing moment where he like um I, I can't quite like remember what but like he basically like tells them like how like depressed he was <laughs> <laughs> it's being very real so to say yeah so um yeah I mean we don't really hear um from Anno um, that much um, because he's not in management and this is mostly about exactly uh, yeah. yeah it's mostly about Takeda um, and Okada's uh, um, roles in the sci-fi convention scene and later on in Gainax but mostly from the management perspective how things were made possible rather than made uh so um so basically da- daikon uh they don't he uh, Ta- takeda doesn't really talk about it that much but uh, they basically infringe uh the copyright of a lot of companies <laughs> with, in, in the daikon 3 um animation if you have seen it so 
So, but, but obviously, for for legal reasons, he doesn't bring that up, probably. Um, um, <laughs> any, sense. Yes. Um, a- anyway, um, so they set up a switch shop. Uh, they, are, they basically gather uh, as many vol- volunteers um, to work for them in one of... Um, yeah, apparently, I, I think Okada's parents' uh, family is basically rich, well, rich enough in order to uh, provide uh, for a, a rent a warehouse or something um, for the so animators to work. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I, we briefly get to meet um, Okada's uh, wife too uh, here, I guess. Mm-hmm. Where, uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, it's very uh, funny, isn't it? Part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's the shit-eating incident, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit-eating uh, contest. There's someone... Oh, what is what is my so name? It, yeah. We so have to be as shocking as possible. Like, well, why don't we put a... a yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, 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 also, before that, uh, like, um, uh, he talks about how, how, like, they didn't even really have the, the right materials, and they, like... Uh, like they, they they bought uh, one cell. Uh, oh, and yeah, they... and then they pretty much bought a, a whole film of a celluloid, but it was a different type. Therefore, they had to be really quick in in drawing and rotoscoping it. Otherwise, it would be uh, pretty much it will melt away after a little bit. Yeah, and. And for both uh, Daikon uh, 3 and 4, uh, the opening anim- animation was not uh, finished until the morning that the convention... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much rushing it out the door and then bringing it together. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, they're pretty much uh, just, uh, um, uh, you know, volunteers in the end. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Just... yeah. And, um, yeah, so the, the shit hitting incident is that, so they were talking about um, ideas, um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I, I quote, Okada was by far the biggest uh, troublemaker on the set. <laughs> One day he was having it out with the rest of the anime staff, arguing about a scene in the cu- climax, um, a signal f- a fire is coming from a powered suit, a uh, mech, basically. And the smoke from the fire is supposed to turn into the uh, Ide gauge, which is, um, if, if you have seen uh, uh, Ideon, uh, which is an anime uh, b- by um, by the creator of Gundam, by uh, Yoku, mm-hmm. Yoku, uh, Yoku, a uh, uh, Tomino, let's just call him Tom, Tomino. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a symbol from that. Um, but o- Okada didn't like it. Uh, the Ida gauge is too is is just weak. He exclaimed, uh, "It's got mm-hmm. no impact." Uh, we should. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he had uh, you, uh, literally used the word uh, the English word impact. So we should def- def- uh, definitely have it uh, like have it fo- form like a stylized version of a girl's pussy. <laughs> now that would be impact. We need to do something that's never been done before. Otherwise, <laughs> there's no point in doing this at all. Um, um, he started going off um, about this and just wouldn't back down. Uh, the rest of uh, the rest of the staff uh, turned to Kazumi. Um, this was before she married Okada, um, <laughs> and begged her to say something to, to make him stop. Uh, even then, she was uh, famous for her ability to, to control him. Well, if you uh, well if you want to do something no one's ever done before, she began. Why don't you have a Shit eating contest instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want impact? That I- that's impact. And basically, um, every time Okada um, made w- one of his um, outrageous uh, suggestions, people would just start chanting shit eating co- <laughs> contest. Uh, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, one of the things which I forgot to mention um, that he had trouble with when um, uh, gathering people uh, for for his conventions, Takeda, I mean, uh, was that like 
people would accuse him of being uh, right wing or propagandist oh, or something. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, like, those, those are like, um, that was like yeah, earlier on, right? Um, what, like, wasn't, oh god, like, uh, I should I should have really took note. <laughs> I can't remember anything. Like, was, like, did, did he, like, act actually in that, um, you know, like, did he give a, a, a performance? Um, yeah, he did, he did, yeah. Time? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that. That yeah. was a bit earlier, right? Than like the, the uh, Daikon Free Days. Uh, that was like yeah. when he was in the club, right? I think that was during the preparations for the Daikon Four, maybe. Um, mm. I think it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so um, it's just interesting to see the same kind of accusations being thrown, being thrown around, even. <laughs> At that time in Japan. Yeah, I, I mean, the feeling that that I get is that um, the people the people who went to sci-fi here just cared about sci-fi, or at least uh, the people at Gainets anyway, just cared about sci-fi. Didn't really care about politics, one way or the other, really. Exactly. Um, yeah, so th- that, uh, that shut down his uh, proposals. Um, they produced all sorts of uh, goods, uh, items to be sold. Um, even c- even cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and uh, he um, he says that uh, that the female members of the star of the staff were like indentured uh, laborers in some <laughs> attic um, sweatshop, um, working f- feverishly to try t- and meet the quotas uh, f- for uh, these trinkets. Um, and they sold pretty well, and uh, Okada uh, noticed uh, this, which which would then um, inspire him to start um, general products. Products, yeah. I didn't. I knew. I knew about the company, but I didn't know that like uh, the name of the. I always thought that like it was such an uninspired name, you know, just general mm-hmm. products. Yeah, uh, and then it yeah. comes from a sci-fi like the Ring World. It's the same, if I remember right, it's the same um, sci-fi uh, universe that inspired, inspired Halo. Bungie's first-person shooter because there are these words made in the shape of a ring. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like you know, a general product sounds like some like you know, like a multinational, you know, yeah. you know, which, a supplier. Which is, the, um, which is the point behind the, the name of the company in this sci-fi universe? Like, is the most mi- milk toast, uh, uh, easily remembered brand that could come out of a <laughs> of a race that is dedicated to. To uh, selling stuff in in a yeah. interstellar uh, market, pretty much. So, uh, so I quote: uh, uh, "General Products was uh, Japan's first sci-fi specialty store. The name was taken from Ringworld, the novel by American uh, sci-fi author Larry Niven, mm-hmm. and, uh, and referenced a trading company managed." by a race of aliens known as the Puppeteers. <laughs> um, we received permission from uh, Niven himself to use the term uh, for our shop. Um, yeah, and, and one of the things which I was also surprised about is uh, how quickly they were able to, like, get permission. Yeah, um, exactly. It's kind of surprising how all these renowned and already well-established um, authors were like, yeah, you can use this. Yes, you can uh, involve me or myself. I can suggest other people who can yeah. uh, do this instead of myself. But but but, but also like uh, that, that like uh, the other companies like uh, uh, Toho, the company mm-hmm. which owns Godzilla, mm-hmm. they licensed um, and- a lot of stuff. To them. Yeah. Um, e- even though, like, this was just a w- one little store, um, you know, um, yeah, run by a bunch of uh, university students. So, uh, for <laughs> yeah, people who, who don't really 
but not really part of the industry. Um, and the proof that sometimes you just need to um, get up there and, and test the waters, and sometimes unexpected results are just behind the core. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, you uh, can't you can't get lucky um, unless you like make the opportunity to get lucky, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I guess another example would be how um, he's able to get the uh, Osaka Philharmonic Orchestra to uh, to play um, basically th- th- anime themes. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. I guess it's, yeah for their convention uh, and mm-hmm. like apparently uh, he, he just went there they just went there and were like uh, they asked uh, they asked uh, the, 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 the people <laughs> they asked like so um, you know uh, how many people do you want uh, and and they were like oh, and his guys were like uh, we, we don't know uh, you tell us uh, they, they just w- walked in there without knowing anything um, to, to try to get something done essentially um. Yeah. Uh, what else there to say about uh, Daikon Three? Um. Oh yeah. Uh, and, uh, he was bitter about um, and the fact that he was uh, de- they they were denied rather. Uh, there's something called the Seiyun Award. Uh, uh, again by the same co- because of, of uh, the same committee. Um, called the uh, Japan Sci-Fi Fan Group because um, uh, it because it wasn't screened in general theater. The Daikon the the, the Daikon Tree animation was not a screening open in um, uh, general theaters. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, yeah. They, were, they were kind of robbed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think that was more of a. Um, like um excuse like not 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 to give them the uh, award because you know <laughs> because 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 of that that um, animus that was sort of carried over from like, those early days where like anime isn't like sci-fi you know exactly mm-hmm. and, more like... and uh, uh, instead they were just they were just given uh, an honorable mention um and um I, so because of this um, and because of a su- suggestion by another friend. He decided, uh, Takeda decided, well, not just Takeda, but they decided to basically um, rig the elections um, to the to the J- Japan sci-fi fan group and uh, in order to appoint uh, Takeda by setting up a bunch of uh, fake uh, clubs which would, all, uh, which would all vote for, uh, <laughs> for Takeda, basically. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah. Um. So that so that was da- Daikon three. I don't think there's anything else to say about Daikon three. Daikon four was basically like 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 Daikon three but bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, I guess um, uh, one not not worthy thing which I noticed was that uh, so basically, uh, Anno um and some other guys who had talent had had um had yeah I think that there's some stuff to talk about. So Anno. Um, and some other guys who had talent had uh, gone to Tokyo uh, to work on uh, macros. Yes, you don't know, exactly. yeah. yeah, it's a big uh, TV series, um, and like it was a big opportunity for them. But they decided they decided to um, just stop their work there and come back uh, just to work on this fan uh, project of um, <laughs> Daikon Four. Opening animation. Um, well, yeah, uh, another interesting thing which um, uh, Takeda and his guys came up with was that so um, after after the iPod three, so there, there's a uh, I believe that there's a time where like um, Takeda has been a bit lethargic, but then he's uh, he's talked into basically not just wasting his life doing nothing but let's just do another convention and he also starts working working at um, uh, general products uh, the the shop run by Okada um so yeah, the, uh, he gets he yeah. gets involved in a lot of of endeavors so to say yeah and uh, well according to him anyway like it's it's everybody else who wanted to do another convention and not him uh, but then uh, he he decides that if he, 
if you're going to do a convention, then um, it's going to be the biggest. I think the Icon 3 was around 1,500 people, and Icon 4 was 4,000 people, which would have made it the largest convention at that time. Um, so, uh, the, but the problem was that, um, so, uh, the convention, the sci-fi convention for next year was, uh, was, so the, the nomination for it, let, let's say, was already, already taken, um, for another place. So that means that they had two years to prepare. Mm-hmm. And in order to, to, to uh, I, I thought it was a very good idea in order to train, train the staff they decided to start um, making films, basically, uh, in order to train the staff for the convention. So, so, the, re- the, so the, the, the official reason that they were uh, making films was in order to... The, the, the official reason why, why they formed some, something called Daikon Films um, was in order to make films, but, but the actual reason was in order to prepare, uh, to tra- train the staff for Daikon 4, because I, I think they said that um, they had um, 80, 80 staff members for Daikon 3, but that they would need uh, at least um, 400 staff members. And uh, that, that, that by the end of it, uh, like they initially intended to just get people, uh, to source people from sci-fi clubs, but in the end, um, they source people from, ev- uh, from everywhere, and basically... He said something like they were like a mercenary band or something yeah. by the end of it. Uh, brought um, together by like more like chance or almost. Yeah. But yes, united in this final goal of bringing forth uh, Daikon for its opening and everything like ready to <laughs> making sure yeah. that. This convention will go on smoothly. Yeah, and uh, in order to to tra- to train the staff, uh, well, he he argues, Tokhet argues that basically making a film is also like is also like uh, uh, it's also an event. So mm-hmm. um, um, e- even though it's not the, exactly the same, um, and I thought that was a pretty smart idea uh, on their part. Yeah, no, no, um, certainly. It's a little bit like um, doing a little bit of a simulation when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, when they do like practices with the uh, um, Red Cross and uh, police enforcement to make sure that if there is any kind of big issue, like a terroristic attack or something like this, everything runs smoothly. It's the same yeah. kind of principle only applied. To. Yeah, but, but, but also I, I kind of um, also it it is also a worthwhile activity in in and of, it, on, mm-hmm. of itself making a film. You can because, record and you can record that. Yeah, like you 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 get something at the end of it um, yeah. as well. Um, and uh, as he says, it helped to work uh, to build a, a workable chain of command. Mm-hmm. And, also, and also to keep the staff motivated for an event that wouldn't happen in a, in a another two years, keeping in mind that the staff are basically just volunteers. So why should yeah. they care about uh, an event which, like, they, they probably have a university work and what not to do. <laughs> right? Uh, supposedly. <laughs> um, yeah, they they had a bunch of work to uh, pretend to be, to, uh, pretend to be doing, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, also, uh, g- General Products was open and they, they were making so- something called uh, Garage Kits. Yeah, Which from, from my understanding, is basically customized um, anime figurines, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, I don't. Uh, it's I think sort so. of the yeah, it's sort of the precursor, the early form of those um, um, self-assembled kits where you can just buy a figure and put and put it together, with all the different elements. Because it was something relatively new at the time. So, uh, so uh, T- Takeda used to be freeloading at some some other place, but then he moves to uh, he moves to live uh, alone with Okada at uh, I think uh, literally at the place where they had they had the shop, 
and so it didn't, it didn't feel like as much as uh, like freeloading. Um, yeah, and also they talk about like uh, basically talking about his difficulty, uh, like or they they had to sleep um, um, inside the props and whatnot. Um, yeah. yeah, and all that. Um, but how else? Cat house, like during the <laughs> because you can imagine like there is like a uh, foam that is used to prepare all these different props and you can carve it out and make it feel like it's sort of like a nestling ground where you can rest. So it's kind of funny imagining someone uh, having to sleep in such yeah. conditions in such a place. <laughs> also, apparently, the resin uh, looked like uh, rice crackers, so sometimes they would burn <laughs> their hands or something on them. And um, so th I think the important thing uh, here is that uh, general products provided money. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Apparently, there were like 200 people on the opening ceremony for the shop. So that's not bad. Um, and also, um, it served as a sort of um, re recruiting ground. Mm -hmm. uh, like, um, uh, so they used their customer base as a pool to scout new t talent, here it says. So if, if anyone showed uh, some interest in what they were doing, uh, or in what we were doing, or if they just seemed to have a lot of time on their hands, <laughs> uh, they were immediate, they were immediately, to the... <laughs> they were immediately propositioned to, and added to the staff. Um, a general products uh, function uh, both as a hangout for the Icon 3 vet veterans and as a place to find uh, um, potential re recruits. Um, which is kind of weird to think about it um, because I don't know um, because it was a retail store but like they, they made their own stuff which is yeah. not very uh, common I would say for geek kind of stores. Um, yeah, I mean, usually what what you can what you can get from uh, I don't know a game store is not really that much different from than what what you can get uh, get from eBay. So mm. the people it, they're just a retail um, place and nothing more. Usually, game. Not uh, nowadays. Store. It's like yeah. Um, yeah uh, so uh, what else is there to say about the? Uh, is is this where they talk about uh, the different movies that they work on? I think it is, and uh, one of the movies is called. Uh, they are mostly parody movies, right? Like, for example, there's the yeah. the, the live action uh, uh, Ultraman uh, movie directed by Arno, um, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, I think in, in total they make uh, three of them, and and one of them is sort of a what's it called? Um, the the one for which they get accused of being uh, right wing. Um, oh yeah, it's like um, I don't remember the name. It's like <laughs> it's too Japanese for me. Uh, let me yeah, see. Yeah, pretty much. It's like the um, the um, it's sort of a parody of the um, squad, like team of heroes kind of movies. And they've got like a uh, uh, crazy name where there's like one kamikaze, Araki. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Empura, uh, like, I think Empura, I kamikaze. I feel like. Uh, yeah. those, those were like the names of. Um, and, it, and it was called like something like the patriotic. Uh, so yeah. There was the word patriotic in it, and I guess that was enough uh, for them to get accused of being. <laughs> It's uh, like if if someone took um, uh, uh, Team America squad. Uh, what was the name of the movie by the creators of South Park? Uh, Team America World Police too seriously. It's like oh, this is right wing propaganda. Like no, come on. Yeah. So uh, another thing which he says is that even though it was the uh, it was a, a, a parody a parody movie, the explosions had to be real. So yeah, they they Which makes how sense, to, honestly. Yeah, um, yeah. So basically, they researched how to make explosions or something. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like kind of using um, firecrackers and other things. Like. <laughs> and gasoline, I think they said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to make it look as real as possible. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, if you have seen the U- Ultraman one, it looks kind of decent for something made by a bunch mm-hmm. of uh, fans. Um, and uh, later on, um, again, they were able to somehow get the permission from the right holders to release the DVD. Well, well I guess it's just because uh, Arno became famous, so... Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, and, um, he made, he made like, a, like, like a big, a big, you know, a bu- budget film, right? Um, has that came out yet? His, like, Ultraman... Oh yeah! Now, now he's fi- he's he's finally getting now now in, in, in <laughs> yeah. his sixties he's fi- finally getting the chance to work on. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know the, the series that he was um, into when he was a kid and um, also at college. Um, and because clearly, I know he's I know he's more into. Um, again, like uh, just like with Takeda, I kind of get the feeling that I know it's not really. I mean, he's into anime, obviously. He's into Gundam and stuff. Uh, and he wouldn't be making anime otherwise. But I kind, it kind of feels like he likes... He likes uh, live action more and wherever he can, he tries to bring... Um, and by live action, I mean uh, tokusatsu, special effects, uh, stuff. Um, anyway. Um, I think you, you can... He, he, find us talking about uh, Eva elsewhere. Yeah, and uh, so one of the f- films uh, called Kaiketsu no Tenki, which is another parody of hero shows, mm-hmm. um, is, is where the title for this book comes from. And, and no Tenki um, apparently it means carefree and um, m- m- probably, oh, probably big... Um, yeah. So what? So what? It's it. It's called the um. Yeah. So like, no tanky would be. Oh God. What, what was it like? No, no. Triple. A coffee. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Like it is. You like literally just told me, <laughs> and I forgot. I, I'm hopeless. Yeah. So like, it was it. It would like this book would translate to like, the the uh, carefree memoirs, which I guess is like me- you know makes sense, right? <clears throat> Yeah. Um. I mean, episode, apparently, um, a bit, uh, uh, Takeda kind of guesses that m- m- the reason that they cast him as the protagonist is because <laughs> he looks uh, kind of uh, carefree, dazed, or something. Um. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the costume. Um. Um. Uh, l- later on, um, there's a convention report again. Um. Uh, because. It's all about conventions, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he talks about th- that's a that's a report written by somebody else because most of the, the book is written from Takeda's perspective, but the report is yeah. written. Uh, the report on the convention is written by somebody else. Well, spe- speaking of um, convention reports, like uh, um, I, I didn't know that 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 there, that there was so- somebody somebody who was considered to be the father of Lolicon. But apparently th- th- there is, um, because um, earlier on... <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> sorry, like, could you imagine? <laughs> uh, uh, earlier on, th- they were talking about... Um, or Takeda or, 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 was talking about how, like, at the very start, uh, uh, like, about when, he was, when he was talking about conventions, how um, he, uh, he had found out about conventions or something mm-hmm. through magazines, and that there was... Uh, uh, this guy uh, uh, who helped make conventions popular, uh, 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 a mangaka, can't remember his name now, um, and and he was able to make it, to po- popularize it by by starting to write to make um, convention reports um, for magazines. And obviously, he was he was not the only one, but um, he was the one who was quoted there. And when you look at the footnotes. Uh, like at the end, like almost as like. By the way, uh, uh, he was known as uh, <laughs> uh, the father of Lolicon. Um, <laughs> anyway, so 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 yeah. Coming back to this, uh, no, 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 thank you thing. 
Um, so, like, obviously, it's one of those costumed hero uh, yeah. sh- shows. Um, and uh, later on, I believe, I believe, like, he still ha- keeps keeps on the um, the costume, and he has to put it on around like yeah. twenty years later. So. And uh, it's it's censored, but I think the implication is that like he's grown t- his he has grown too fat for mm-hmm. uh, for the costume that we, which he used to wear as uh, a college student. Um, yeah, that anyway. Um, okay, so yeah, so there are the the movies. I can't fi- I can't I just can't find the title of uh, the supposedly right wing one, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it, was, um, it was the one he like literally wore a costume for, right? I thought that was like the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, I think all the movies were basically just costume. Uh, yeah. 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 And also, yeah. Um, um, yeah. All, all these were, when I say films, I mean like live, live action, like. Uh, um, you know, with real actors, not anime. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, you know, like live action is uh, much much cheaper than the anime. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um. Yeah. I mean, after even after all, all these guys left um, uh, university, um, uh, the Daikon film thing, which they had set up, mm-hmm. um. And the conven the the conventions at executive committee continued continued to make uh, films uh, um, after Daikon Four um, and uh, sh- showing the 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 films um, at special screenings around the country. Um, so but, I found the name. Yeah. So it's Aikoku Sentai Daini. Oh, yeah. What's the English name though? I think it, it it was there in one of the footnotes there. That's if you can't find it, it's all right. It was something like the patriotic. Uh, it's not uh, Ranger of the Grand Nation of Japan. <laughs> yeah, obviously you're not supposed to take that seriously. Obviously, <laughs> no, it's not. It's like <laughs> it, let, that's what I linked it to. Uh, Team America World Police is more like a as ironic take on what yeah. <laughs> the title actually is. Me. Yeah, it, it, it's it's you know I don't know like uh, in um, in the backgrounds of a lot of those uh, gunbuster episodes, there's you know there's some like you know pro nationalist stuff. Uh, yeah, as well, yeah, so. yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's you know Japan is number one, sci-fi is number one. That that was basically the message of uh, that thing. Anyway. Um, yeah, so they continue the so the, the even after you know I I believe even after Gainax was formed, Daikon film continued, but uh, they basically just uh, it, uh, according to Takeda, uh, part of the reason why Daikon film kept on going after Daikon four was because of a mistaken belief that they that, that the party would never end. Mm-hmm. Um, even general products had no more than a handful of employees. The Daikon f- uh, film um, uh, film's ma- main cast was com- comprised of college students who would eventually g- uh, graduate or lose interest. It, it was just a matter yeah. of time before the whole thing was uh, But no one understood that. Um, yeah. So, and he says that m- maybe that's like uh, the limit of uh, amateur work as compared to uh, professional work, and then he talks about how, like, uh, we shed our amateur skins and became full fledged uh, professionals in the industry, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. And yeah, so I think, yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, from what I read, um, uh, about his description about Daikon, oh, um, he says that they did any, uh, a lot of things which had not been done before, but I kind of just kind of felt like. Uh, the the kind of stuff that you would have in the average um, convention now, like you have panels going on at the same time in different mm-hmm. places, uh, mm-hmm. and and all that. Um, anyway, so I think we have reached the point. Do we need? So yeah. So that, uh, 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 Osamu Tezuka, but, um, um, 
the father of manga, he, he showed up to the Daikon 3. And, uh, and he, he was like, um, there are many characters, and, and then he, um, I think he, he missed the screening, but then because he, he's Tezuka, they, they arranged um, for the Daikon 3 to be screened again, to be shown again. Hmm. Um, for, for his sake. Um, uh, but um, um, afterwards, he, he met. Um, he met uh, the creators of. Uh, uh, give me a second, oh. sorry. Uh, um, yeah, so he he met he met the creators of. Um, yes, yeah, so, so basically, I think Takeda wasn't there, but some some of the other people were there. Anna probably, I think, was there, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Tezuka was like, uh, there are many characters in uh, in this uh, opening animation, but. But also, there aren't there aren't some characters, and only yeah. afterwards did they realize um, that what Ezra meant by this is that uh, they had not included any any uh, um, characters by Tezuka, even though they probably knew he was going to be there. Um, yeah, and uh, I think Tezuka then helped out with uh, Daikon Four. And obviously, mm-hmm. they they included some some characters by Tezuka, but I don't know. To be honest, uh, other than Astro Boy, I don't think there's really that exactly. many iconic. <laughs> I, I don't recall any other character like Astro Boy is the the one. I know it's one of the uh, the big name, one of the fourth, pretty much one of the fathers. So, yeah, I think Astro Boy is like, is like technically the first anime, right? Yeah, and it's the one that made him famous. Yeah, and it was and it was kind of thanks to like a sweet company or something like that gave him like a um a um like sponsor um a a, a sponsorship like mm. <laughs> so like you would use Astro it's Boy nice. to um yeah like advertise this 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 product. Right? Are, you, are you there, students? Is there, is there everything okay so, <laughs> on your rent? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we've lost him. What, 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 sorry, what, what were we talking about? I was kind of sidetracked. Um, no, uh, the connections that um, Takeda made and that later on, in a sense, he was able to keep going with um, producing... Like, well, creating Gainax Studios, a studio in the first place, and then keep on going was also because of the connections he was able to make through uh, Daikon 3 and Daikon 4, especially. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I, yeah, because um, I know um, Wings, I sort I sort of get a bit a bit muddled with the timeline after um, after Daikon Four because there's there's some stuff that happens between Daikon Four and um, Wings of uh, Odyssey, you know that um, film. Um, does like does something like did he write about anything that happened there like in the book? Because um, I've like totally forgotten. Um, like oh, um, I think you know, it's like totally um, left now. But actually, like thinking about it, if he's left, then he's no longer streaming. <laughs> oh no! So... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ping him just to um, <laughs> just, just to see if it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, the stream has actually stopped uh, as well. Uh, I guess, like, I guess that's that's all for it. Uh, sorry, hey can there. you? Hey there. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's somebody. Somebody knocked down the Wi-Fi. Uh, and oh, sure. Um, yeah, so I... I'm, I'm, I'm just checking. Like, yeah, you're no longer streaming. The uh, stream has <laughs> has stopped. <laughs> oh shit. Um, let's see. We, we still have Craig, though. <laughs> yeah. 
gonna ha- gonna have to um, process um, that, uh, all see, that audio. See, see, if, see that it's working now. Again. Oh yeah, it's it takes it takes a bit for a YouTube to um, tell me when you're streaming or not. Uh, hold on. I need to like get get a notification. Man, it's uh, it's so weird because uh, YouTube will like not display any anything on your channel, and like and uh, you, and usually I'm only able to be able to access the stream through like the notifications. Um, it's kind of annoying. Um. <laughs> Oh. Well. Yeah. Oh well, it's uh, it says it's online here, but uh, it's not up. Is it? I can't. I can't see anything. Um, I can. Man, it's not even. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty annoying. I'm just gonna uh, click on it again. Nah, I'm just I'm just getting the playback. Um, I'm just getting a playback. Mm. Yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> oh. Well, we can we can put a bookmark um, here, right, and we we can maybe come back to it and finish the yeah. conversation. We can we we can do a part two. Um. Yeah, uh, let's just go. On. Uh, is Craig still recording? At least. Yeah, or yeah, Craig's still here. Yeah. Uh, I guess I did. Did that I calling Craig today? Uh, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, it's unfortunate because I was like literally um, just about to leave. Um, I need to get going like now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a fairy. Um, hopefully I um I added like enough of my like low IQ oh, yeah. like, interjections in, in, into this conversation. <laughs> but so uh, yeah, um, I'll um <clears throat> I'll, I I do have to drop out now. Um, unfortunately, um, I'll, I'll I'll see you guys later. Next okay. week for the um for the first chapter. Okay. That'd be good. Hopefully. Alright, yeah. Yeah. See you for a night. See you. Um yeah. yeah. We pretty, we pretty much got to the point where um Gainax Studio is about to emerge from Daikon and Daikon three and Daikon four. Especially because of all the um, connections that Takeda made in those years. Yeah. So, uh, so by this part, yeah, yeah. So they form. Uh, um, let me check. Um, yeah, they, I can't. I think that there's a reason that they decided to. Um, oh, and and that's pl- and um, the uh, the reason for the name Gainas. I can't remember now. Yes, so, it's because of the. Um, of their native diet of the. Uh, sorry, you cut out. It's because of their native dialects, um, and they were called um, during the. Um, um, I think it was during the. Uh, oh, I found it. I found con, it. During the Oshino yeah. con, con, uh, they were called the uh, uh, Gaina. Uh, entertainers. Oh yeah, Gaina Matsuri. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's I know. why they later on they took that um, that term Gaina and just added an X at the end. Because <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like a name of the of yeah, robot. Yeah, a bit more yeah. Western in a sense. Um. So yeah, I found it. Um, um, yeah, as he says, it doesn't come from any foreign words. It is one hundred percent pure Japanese. Uh, so <laughs> in the Yanago dialect of um, uh, Totori, uh, the word "gain" uh, means big. Even now, yeah. the city a festival called Gaina Matsuri, which means big festival. <laughs> uh, both Akai and Yamaga knew about this Gaina word, and as the story goes, they. Each independently came up with the idea of using it as, for the company name, without consulting each other. Uh, the ads at the end was just stuck, out, stuck on to make um, the name look more like the name of a robot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so they formed Guy Nets. Uh, 
the, what was the reason so we needed a cop we needed a corporate vessel to hold the production funds mm-hmm. uh can't remember how they got production funds but again because of some connections um yeah shark loans and other things <laughs> <Like laughs> yes because of, of dangerous endeavor it was to say on their part yeah yeah um, Especially for Takeda, since he was um, the one that uh, accepted all these loans and put his name on the high. <laughs> yeah, um, and apparently, like he, he basically had to live live in uh, the off the the build their building or something. Uh, yeah. that they had to, At um, some point, they were living in like this shared common place and then you move to um sort of like the <laughs> the broom storage of the place and he sent his his wife and daughter to live with her wife's parents with the wife's parents more to try and save money yeah um yeah um so anything i i guess the most interest so some most interest so it's, so there are some uh, um i guess there are some trivia about the different tv series and uh, uh how, how they got the, the money and it, it gets a little bit convoluted uh, for me um <laughs> yeah out of names like the different people in charge of the different projects and who came up with the deal who came up with the idea itself who was yeah. able to get in touch with that or that other sci-fi author to get the um, the rights for the idea but basically for the longest time they were, they were in the red and um yeah I think the only thing which uh, he says consist- consistently made money was the gaming um, section, mm-hmm. and um, at some point um, o- Okada was like, "Let's stop! Let let let's just stop making anime." Um, uh, and because of that and other and other disagreements, uh, Okada is kicked out of um, um, Gainets, basically. Yeah, and, it's pretty much they say you're not doing much. You just keep talking and proposing things that we should do, but you don't. So they 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 even asked Takeda to pretty much uh, speak with the guy, and when he found that there was resistance from Okada, it was like, well, it's either you or myself. Either you quit or I quit, and the guy was like, okay, then I quit. And he did so also because um, Okada's wife was a renowned sci-fi author, so he wasn't like too afraid. But, uh, you mean Takeda's family. wife, not Okada, Okada's? No, I think I think both of them. <laughs> both <Really>? of them <laughs> they were like in the situation where I could quit and my wife still has a. As a foothold in the sci-fi, <laughs> in the sci-fi industry, therefore uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But at that point, it was Okada's wife, and was, um, sort of a recognized name in the sci-fi um, subculture. Therefore, he wasn't too upset. I like, wasn't too afraid of quitting, despite everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also uh, another thing which we mentioned uh, is that um, Okada rather uncharacteristically uh, he he basically start, started reading uh, parallel uh, books uh, or something, um, and mm-hmm. um, l- later on uh, after he leaves Gainets, by the way, the, the way that he makes a lot of money is by writing a book about losing weight, uh, which. Be, sort of, sort of became a bestseller, mm-hmm. even even though it was totally un- unrelated to to everything else which he did. 
but um, as, as, as somebody, um, as, as a comment which I read online said, uh, Okada will probably be remembered for uh, the stuff which he did at Guy Nuts, uh, rather than um, his book on how to lose weight or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of uh, Guy Nuts games, uh, the most popular being, uh, I guess, influential, I don't know if it's influential, so something called Princess Maker. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's something that I heard about, but I, I didn't even check it out. Yeah, b- b- basically, it's a game they are like, uh, y- you are the father or, or something uh, of, of, of a princess, uh, of, of a little girl, and then you just uh, have to decide what education and whatnot will, will be. Uh, <laughs> some sort of a development kind of game. Um, I don't... Yeah, it, uh, again, it's all been lost to the past. I don't know if it's even playable. Um, anyway, I think Gainetz, uh loses the rights to it anyway because the, p- the person working on it leaves. Um, yeah, so have to sort of yeah. like... Uh, there is a fight over a lot of people living in Guyana. They they claim possession or authorship over this long lasting series <laughs> to try and get into other video game studios or brands. So it's a bit of a messy situation in that regard. Yeah. Um so, so I guess it's it's so this book was, was written around two thousand, so it's it sort of ends uh, at a point when uh Gainas was not doing that badly. Yeah, but rather now, abruptly uh, after pretty much after uh, the success with uh of course <laughs> Evangelion. Yeah, just five five years or so, something like that afterwards. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, they still had a few decent anime to make, but not now it's uh, completely dead. And uh, 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 Ano left. Um, also, uh, there's also the the Tats scandal, which is also discussed a little bit yeah. in here. Um, okay, yeah, they basically, yeah, they didn't, uh, the Japanese IRS, uh, <laughs> came, came down on the, their doors and, the, yeah. <laughs> and uh, after Evangelion, because they made, they made a lot of money, <laughs> and yeah. I guess they did, they wanted to secure the future of the company, which is, which was all, always in the red, uh, but they got caught, uh, and, um, yeah, but they still had a few, a couple of uh, good anime to make, like Garan Lagan. But I mean, now, now uh, it's dead. I think th- there was some kind of a scandal um, about uh, you know, Lemmy Too. Uh, and uh, Ano, I believe, also denounced uh, Guy Nuts. Um, and obviously, <laughs> Ano, Ano took uh, the rights to uh, Guy Nuts. Uh, to, sorry, to. Whoever, for the most part, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's not much much left of um, the old, I yeah, yeah, the old guard that guy. Now. Yeah, which is um, very cool. honestly, it's very common cool for big brands or big names in almost all industries. Yeah, Okada now is making YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I guess we, we don't. There's not much else to talk about um, because there's not. Yeah, I, I I didn't find I didn't find the the stuff after they became. Um, yeah, after they, be, after they became guys, like much the usual. We had our. Uh, um, we did try to create different things some of them worked out and at one point 
uh, we were bloated with stuff. We said either you stay and you are ready to accept the fact that sometimes you won't get paid on time. And it seems like uh, Takeda was a bit surprised how many people left, especially those who were stuck with, uh, with him since the university years. It was like, that was kind of sad. And some of these people left and from one day to the next, they didn't. So I can imagine his, his disappointment. Yeah, and he says that, that also says that, that the people who remained, they're not necessarily more trustworthy either. <laughs> yeah, um, because it was like they are staying mostly because they have no better option. <laughs> no, yeah, and uh, but but uh, uh, still he says that they, since they dis- decided to stay, um, like uh, we need to, uh, I need to uh, make sure that um, that basically they, they made the right choice by staying. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess the only thing which is left to talk about um, is um, the little convention report, which is. I don't know, what do you call it, a victory lap or, or something? Um, <laughs> yeah, something like this. Yeah, so, so basically, um, uh, Takeda decides to step down as the chairman for uh, some convention thing. And it's his last convention. And now... Um, 20 years, he notes that it's like 20 years after his first role as a leader for a convention, it's like 20 years after Daikon 3, and it's sort of like, glad that at least he got there. Yeah, um, and I, and then after, after the, uh, there's nothing special about that convention, I, the report anyway. No, in, by, in a sense, it's like sort of glad I was able to show up once more before resigning as the head of um, like it was part of the it was one of the chairman of the Japan Sci-Fi Association and then finally was able to openly say this is the end of the run it's been a pleasure Uh, I've done what I could I was glad was able to meet with all these people. I was able even to go once to Jap- uh, to the United States and all the convention over there, all the American fans. It's sort of like like a celebration. It's not living on a sour note, but it's more like I'm for it's too yeah. late yeah. and I regret it, which is yeah. admirable, honestly. Yeah, I mean, at at some um, at some point, I remember that they actually did try to they did a convention called AnimeCon uh, in America, but that it didn't really amount yeah, to anything. Yeah, it didn't really yeah. work. But at the same time, it was sort of glad that he tried to do yeah. something you know, outside of what was at that time his comfort zone. What I like about um, the, uh, what I really like about a kid that is like you can see that it's someone that it's trying to get out of his comfort zone as much as possible. Mm. Which is admirable. The most interesting thing from that report to me personally was uh, the, the thing, the, the running, uh, the running, the, the gag about the, the monolith. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where they put up the monolith. So I believe it, um, the convention was in 2001. So, so probably because of the movie or something. Yeah. Or, and um, um, you know, after a while, uh, people had made had made. Uh, um, yeah, they started to make things. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> somebody had like made a small a small monolith as an yeah. offering. And uh, uh, when I read that, I was wondering if the 
uh, if the team, like, you know, visceral games, the team behind that space took inspiration to a degree <laughs> for its own monolith in the Dead Space universe, since you see small replicas of it and stuff like this. If someone maybe told them the story of the monolith from the, <laughs> from the Gainax convention in the United States, and they were like, oh, that's kind of interesting and sort of creepy. And they used yeah. it for that space to, uh, yeah. as an inspiration. And, and, and somebody later on had like put those... Uh, a religious um, uh, yeah, those are the around the place. Yeah, <laughs> which would be kind of uh, interesting because, like they say, no art is like iterative. Someone takes the takes the same images and then reworks them to one level or another. And so it would be interesting to see if there is any co- real connection. If something that came out like in sort of a natural way a progression from that still I found it rather interesting that uh, the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey sort of reappeared and then it was turned into <laughs> into a, a sort of uh, religious item or <laughs> something like this in that convention I, I uh, so l- later later on um, um, after that basically after the convention report there's uh, an interview a, a trial in absentia or something uh, <laughs> basically um, uh, Anno uh, and two other guys talk about um, uh, the first about the yeah. And uh, I, I think I, I found uh, Anon's comments to be the most interesting. So yes, yes, yeah. it's very like the way he talks. About it. it seems like he's the guy who's leading the conversation. I think at the beginning he seems a little bit shy, but um, the further the interviewer tries to prod this group, the more he opens up and is the one who says the most. And is the one who paints the, let's say, the, the full figure of why and how uh, Takeda became this leading figure within Gainax Studio. And in a sense, it was this, the, this figure, it was the, the least recognizable yet the most important element in this team because it was able, like I said before, to bring everyone together and it was the one going out seeking for the funds, for the money and even even in, to a degree risking his own career, his own future and his own family because he went and spoke with um, people who could provide the money but at the same time to a higher interest rate therefore putting himself in real danger in the long run he truly like, lived in these experiments like, uh, like Anno talks about how um, you know after a meeting like that, that after some di- there's been some disagreement uh, with, um, with the producer and um, uh, he he took the side of the producer against uh, against Takeda, <laughs> and later on, um, when when uh, when he was at the bar with Takeda, uh, Takeda burst into tears. Um, they went back for for now, much forgiveness, and they were yeah. trying to. And yeah, he says uh, up until that that moment, Evangelion was the only thing. That I cared about, but after I saw Takeda cry, the whole thing seemed so pointless. Um, seeing that side of him, I remember what a wonderful thing it was. Um, yeah, in a sense, it was like that kind of vulnerability. Of, uh, the vulnerability uh, Takeda's vulnerability thing that was able to hold them together. Like this guy is so devoted to this, he's, he's showing his weakness, showing how. Uh, um, <laughs> What at all of this is taking 
so on and so forth. So let's try to hold on for him to a degree. Yeah, I think it was a good quote to end uh, the book on, um, even though the book kind of ended pretty abruptly, I kind of felt like, but uh, <laughs> I, I guess it's fine. Um, um, it's, so really, I think... it's a really honest book, in a sense. It, you can see the shortcoming of this person in the, in the book It's. <laughs> But in the best way possible, like, I'm like this, and that that's why it's stopping here, and um, Takeda is like this, and that's why we cannot say much more, and we sort of envy his honesty. <laughs> yeah, um, because like most of the interview is like, there's not there's nothing special about this guy. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Again, it's like this is the the best part about it. Like this person doesn't need to say anything or do anything special. It's like it's someone who tries his best, and even if, if in a, in a sense he fails at a lot of things, in the end he was able to pull these people together and create something greater at the end of the day. Be it Daikon 3 and 4 or Gainax as a studio who was able and they were able to produce some some memorable memorable anime well of course their, their creation uh, Evangelion and even Gaiden Lagan to a degree is something that's memorable and, has, and that marked um, the history of anime in itself Nowadays, of course, um, I don't think they produce much, but I know that, in a sense, they live on in the studios that split off from. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, Studio Trigger, the, the, yeah. the studio which I made mean, um, also Gonzo Studio. I know it's a famous one. But like, yeah, uh, Studio Trigger is famous for a lot of uh, recent yeah. anime. <laughs> there is I mean, one recently the, cyber, the cyberpunk one, I guess. Oh, the yeah. Last, the latest, yeah. Um, and uh, what? I uh, also brand new animal that was something I kind of liked. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's sort of one of my guilty pleasures. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I mean. It's a, it's a pity though that the the studio itself uh, went down like that. But uh, what can you do? At the same time, uh, they did not go and um, they did not go out with like in a, in a tragic way. It's more like yeah, let's go separate ways. We did what we had to do, and that's it. It didn't feel like yeah. it was like a a, um, a a violent divorce. It was more like. A, Split up, like we had a good run. Yeah, the, the, yeah and that's it. The convention is over now, so yeah, that that that's sort of final feeling. Um, it's bitter, it's, it's sort of bittersweet rather than just yeah. bitter, <laughs> which would be even worse. Yeah, um, yeah, and on that note, I think we can end the stream. Um, yeah. It was an inter it was an interesting book, and it's interesting that it starts with the perspective like it's um exactly it's like a memoir of this fictional character. Notenki is one of the characters that at one point um, uh, Toshio um, sorry um, that, Takeda. Um, Yashuiro Takeda had to play for one of the shorts for Daikon. And later on, he turned it in, into sort of his own persona when it came to creating, um, well, creating anime and bringing people together for conventions. He even took a few pictures for one of the um, uh, dress up, as they were called at the time. Now it's what we would call um, cosplay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, as this character, Notenki, 
which was a parody. So in a sense, it's sort of like uh, he knows he's a parody of its of himself. This book is sort of a parody of his own life. It, it's kind of meta in that sense, <laughs> but in the best way possible. I think there is like uh, you can see the real person coming through in this story, even if he talks about um, a lot of fictional things. So it's very earnest. It's it, there is a sort of ingenuity and naivete on display at the same time. And I think this is the best aspect of this book. This person is very interesting and he, he doesn't hide his weaknesses. And that's why everyone around him seems to like him so much. From his wife to his co-workers. And I think there is something beautiful about this, despite the book being all over the place. Um, um, it's admirable because it's like, I'm, I'm not a writer, but I want to write. A lot of people want to know more about me. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think. You basically said what I think, so... <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad we are on the same page on this, uh, on this book and on the, per on the person behind it. And I really hope... Uh, I think it's, it's, it's worth reading it just to get an idea of the person behind um, a studio like Gainax who created one of the most influential anime out there even if you don't like it. For example, I'm not a big fan of uh, Evangelion, but at the same time, I recognize the impact he had on anime and on pop culture to a degree. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess uh, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit different than if you were talking... It's a bit harder and more difficult than if we're talking about Anno or some, oh, somebody yeah. who has cre created yeah. something because then you can use um, those works as a way to talk about them. Um, I guess the one work which could be used to talk about um, Takeda would be Otaku no Video because mm -hmm. it's basically... Um, how do I describe it? So there's a live so action. <laughs> yes. Um, if you, do you know the premise? I sort of know about it, but I haven't seen it yet, so I don't want to spoil it for me. Okay, I, I won't spoil it. Um, yeah, and on that note, I think um, let's end the stream. That's uh, yeah, that's the end of it. Uh, yeah, I think it went all right, even if uh, it was mostly just me droning on. No, 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 um, no. I think it it was fine. It's just it's difficult to talk about it. The thing is, this person comes out so earnestly about everything that it's difficult to talk about him <laughs> because he's so upfront. To a degree. Yeah, that's not, that's nothing else to say le left to say basically. Um. Uh, than what the book itself is saying um, mm -hmm. on it. Also, were you able to get because uh, Fahrenheit was saying that the stream was uh, like uh, having some issues when you left? Um, what do you mean? I was saying that it, it went off for a bit. Oh yeah, I think the, the streams just stopped altogether, right? Um, oh, okay, so the, the, the good thing is that Craig is still recording something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you got the audio, you can just slap it on top of an image and that's it. Yeah, I might, I might do that, yeah. Uh, or maybe I might just leave it as it is, because I don't know, did we really talk up that much after? Um, I think, yeah, we, we still spoke a little bit about the... Uh, Unless you want to do a second part in the future where we go a bit more in depth. Nah, nah. I, I guess then I will, I will upload it because uh, yeah, the thing is that I <laughs> um, 
um, I cursed at the at at the person who um, <laughs> who messed with the internet. Uh, oh no, there's no. <laughs> um, oh, there's no way. There's no way that Craig caught that. Uh, because because Craig only records what's online, so, so I, I can still rec- uh, recover the audio. That's right. Okay. Let's see how we go. It would be interesting to, <laughs> um, to get the uncut version. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. you curse in the first. <laughs> you. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think I think it was it was worth it having this conversation. No, no, um, it, it was, because uh, very often you think about the studio, but not the people behind it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, even when, um, like, uh, th- there was a bit, um, I, so, uh, Zarathustra Serpent, he wrote a book about uh, Ma- the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm. And, um, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't think pretty highly about it. The uh, uh, MCU, no, I don't. I don't yes, care. yeah, you but, know, uh, nice. I'm not gonna deny it. I'm saying yeah. like, it's all garbage, but yes, yeah, I mean, um, there is a reason why it's called Cape Sheep, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and I think people have gotten tired of it and it's quietly yeah, dying finally yeah. because people are tired of it. Um, to a degree, I'm I glad. Think- at the same time, I'm I'm a bit uh, sorry that the potential behind it uh, exhausted so f- so rapidly, so fast. But I think yeah, it's I the, it's the same thing happened with uh, cyberpunk, happened with uh, steampunk, all these kind of like um, meta universes. They, they the idea behind it. Um, die rather quickly. Yeah, I mean, it did last quite a while. Um, no, even 20, though 20 yeah. years, I think, more or less. Yeah. If we um, were to, I mean, unless you count, no, I think 20 years more or less. Yeah, but, but, but anyway, like, um, in that book, he talked a, a little bit about, like, uh, uh, like the, the people who came out with the idea, apparently, apparently two brothers. Came yeah, up with the idea. Um, it's, uh, they were the guys behind um, the first. I think they were the two brothers behind the f- the um, uh, the Captain America movies, right? Or am I wrong? I think so. Um, and um, yeah, it was you know getting getting to, to yeah, know about yeah. about uh, like uh, what they had to do to get um, to get people to accept this idea. <laughs> um, sort sort of made it a little, just slightly um, v- less worse. Um, no, in my it's eyes. interesting. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like they were trying to uh, drip feed some ideas. Um, how certain movies will cross boundaries, etc. It is fascinating. It's just um, the only problem is. Well, it's the me. It's the the subjects they decided to work for the most part. Right. Um. Um. Yeah. I I think that because of because of this book, like uh, a a long time ago now, probably a year ago now, I made a video about like. Um, how I wasn't into into conventions because like <laughs> what is the point like if you want to listen to some of your creators uh the creator speaking you can usually do that like it there's, it's no different than if you listen to a video of your or, or read an interview because mm. most of the time when you go to a convention at least the ones which I went to uh you almost never got a chance to speak with the creators at all um or if someone asks questions they are the books that are questions about uh, trivia and small details than no one yes yeah. and, and like like um i don't know um the ones the one which i, which I went to like it was like uh like a q and a session basically so you might get a chance to ask a question uh probably not though <laughs> so at the point it is you might to come up with a yeah. question 
Uh, yeah, just like that. Um, and I was so, sort of thinking while reading this, like when he talked about how um, uh, it's different with small conventions. Um, and that might be the reason why I didn't like conventions, because I went to a big one. Mm. And uh, um, b- maybe next time I should try going to a, uh, a smaller one where I like... I might actually be able to speak with someone. Um, and also, also, it seems to me, um, if, th- if this is anything to go by, if this book is anything to go by, that organizing a convention is probably, is probably a lot more enjoyable than going to one, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask next time that I go to a convention, because I'm planning to go to... It's not really a convention, it's more like a party. Um, <laughs> feels weird to say this, but I'm going to the London Furry par- Winter Party. So maybe I'll have the chance to talk with someone from the like organizing team and ask them how it feels like to organize, you know, you know, booking the venue, picking a team, everything like this. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind interviewing someone, but um, obviously not on this. Uh, I guess <laughs> probably. <not. laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. I. I. I guess. I guess we are, we are uh, like uh, we, we were sort of laughing at, uh, or at least I was at, uh, you know how how uh, his. Uh, Little sci-fi club was was just a talking shop, uh, but but that's basically what this channel. No, it's <laughs> not. Yeah, I mean, there is nothing wrong with that. If you can expand on that, there is nothing wrong with having a circle of people who share the same like, common interests or the same passion. Yeah, I, I guess that another. Anime on this topic would be uh, Genshiken, if you have heard of it. No. Um, so, so if Otaku no video is like the self-deprecating but also self-glorifying um, anime of Otaku culture, then Genshiken is more like um, they are trying to uh, show it realistically but also with a slight positive bent um, rather hmm. than negative. Um, so, like, the will show, like, uh, okay, this episode, uh, we are all going... Uh, so, so it's, an, um, it's a university um, anime club, basically. And, oh, this week we are going to... Or this, this episode, they are going to show, like, what it's, what, what's it like to make a, a, Gan, a Gundam model or something. Um, Is it like a, and, it's like a series, or...? Yeah, it's a series, series. Like... Like uh, eventually, they they uh, they all, I think, finish college, and uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of drama, um, <laughs> um, but not that much. And yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a TV series. There's three seasons, and also a manga. I've seen the anime, but not the manga. To for for my taste, as uh, it was a little bit too slow. Um, I prefer like it with I, I like it when. Uh, you know, that's that's a bit of tension. Uh, but then, I, um, like, it's it's sort of it's sort of um, like a moe show, but without the moe. Basically, the characters are uh, <laughs> like see. it's uh, slow paced. Like, there's no supernatural. Or, um, it's slice of life, basically. Um, like the the biggest struggles that the, that the people I have is like oh, finding a job after college, sure. uh, and uh, oh, I want to get into the industry, but I can't get into it. Um, and like uh, there, there's them, there's an arc where like uh, they're making a manga for a convention, mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, not a manga, a dojin. Uh, I don't think it was that erotic, all things considered. Um, yeah. Uh, what what was my point? Um, yeah, that that the, this is another anime. Um, also to look at more if you want, if you're like into the into meta, you know, anime mm-hmm. about pe- pe- 
people into an anime essentially I see. um yeah uh i mean this is because this is also a book if you are if you're just into it um as well yeah um yeah uh i think yeah yeah this guy's example is a good one overall <laughs> Uh, though it could have turned out uh, pretty badly at any moment. Um, uh, than it uh, uh, wound up being. And I think a, a lot of it, as I said earlier, is because... Um, well, the, the, he was lucky enough uh, to find uh, talented people. Uh, but then again, as, as uh, Fahrenheit pointed out, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have had, had the luck uh, if he hadn't tried. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. 